Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Four Choices Show, Episode 9, with me, your host, Chris, my co-host, David. Fuck Tom Brady. Make some poor choices. The fridge keeps them pretty cool. That's not warm. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. We seem to be declining in our ability on episode nine. That's <laughs> uh because you had me start pre-gaming. I didn't I didn't make I was, you do, I was more aware of what I'm doing, but I was uh <laughs> less entertaining in the content. Well you can go first with your beer because I'm at like eighty percent head right now. It's kinda letting it do its thing. I have what do I have? Beer. What kind of fucking beer is this? Yeah, it's a beer. I think it's hold on, let's try this again. I don't know what kind of fucking beer this is. It's a Florida citrus ale we'll go with by UFO Beer Company, brewed with real Florida oranges, and it's a little disappointing as far as the amount of information on it compared to UFO fucking... Florida Citrus uh, beer. Yeah, huh. it's a little underwhelming compared to that one that had seventeen fucking words I could yeah. pronounce. We'll give her a taster, but the beer is not disappointing. Beer is not disappointing. That's good. No. It's uh good. We're gonna need a one out of ten. Yeah, I'm gonna need another sip. Uh huh. Would I give it an eight? Okay. So you enjoy it. It's good. You'll get it again. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's nothing special. Maybe I shouldn't have deviated from the sours. <laughs> well, I did not. Um, What you got? I'm sticking with, which might become my new favorite brewing company, uh, Hidden Springs Ale Works, once again. I think this is the last hour I searched high and low today. Um, The Enchanted Tiki Room, which is a pineapple soft serve inspired sour ale. There you go. Enchanted Tiki Room. The name of it through. reminds me of that little motherfucker from Crash Bandicoot. What was oh, his name? Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Probably Enchanted what did, Tiki. What did he do? What was the noise he, he was. Blah, blah, blah. I'll add this shit in. Oh, my God. Wow. Pretty good. Oh, well, yeah. Right. Um, like a creamy pineapple sour. Okay. But definitely when it said like like soft serve inspired, I can taste the where they're coming is from. It it's good. Thick? Uh, or does yeah, it I mean, just have that like... It's been sitting here for a couple minutes, and it still hasn't got all that head down yet. But it's not like those. You ever seen those? Like, oh no, it's not like them. those. Like the milkshakey vis- viscosity kind of, yeah, is not. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. no, no, not at all. Um, I would say out of ten, I'd probably give it a give it an eight and a half. Pretty enjoyable. It's light. It's refreshing, but it's also smooth and creamy. Well, thanks, Hidden Spring Ale Works Beer Brewing Company. Yeah, next time you uh come over here, we're gonna have to go there. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. Take down, take it down yonder. I would love again. That. Little do they know, they inspired the name of this uh, podcast. So, yeah, I might never leave. Honestly, if this is, uh, you know, Tampa fourth, or the the brewery, the brewery. This is my fourth beer by them, and each one's been a banger. So, might have to hang out for a little bit, see if they need anyone to wash their dishes and pay me in beer. Okay, is that a job you'd take? Mm, yeah. What would the? <laughs> I would. What would? What would the? Uh, the currency exchange rate have to be for you to so like how many beers per hour would you have to get paid um, well i bought a four pack of these for like 17 or 18 bucks so like four ish four and a half dollars a beer so a four pack i'd say three an hour three beers an hour okay like, that'd be good that'd be like 14 bucks give or take now do you like get to fair. drink while you're working absolutely so would it be fair if they paid you less beers an hour as time went on because I think it's inevitable that your productivity would decrease. Well, I wouldn't drink them all there. I would have some I could What if you had to? What if whatever they paid you, you had to drink there? So it was like, you're like, I want to go to the Uh, bar. uh Everything's free, but you have to wash dishes while you're there. Well, then they'd have to pay me like six beers an hour and I'd just power hour and then go to the bar. Yeah. And then leave. (laughs) Oh, by the way, I didn't wash any dishes. (laughs) Um... (laughs) But your beers are really good, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. So yeah, and I'll be back tomorrow. Be back tomorrow to not do anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, I think that's, that's fair. something. Um, well, you're asking me these would you rather's. I um kind of just steal from some original thoughts of um people may have heard of it. It's million dollars, but so like, hey, I paid you a million dollars, but this scenario to receive that million dollars. Um, and we've discussed them in the past. We've done a few like 
just kind of what ifs. Would you? Would you not? That kind of thing. Yeah. Um. And I ran across I don't a few remember. today. I know it's it's been a bit. I don't. I feel like one of us was very like, oh yeah, in a heartbeat to like everything. And I don't remember if it was me or you. Sounds like me. If I had to yeah. guess. Well, yeah, let's find out. Well, if I paid you a million dollars, David, but you had to live in a Groundhog's Day scenario for the rest of your life, would you do it? Elaborate. So, seen the movie? A while Maybe. ago. A while ago. So, he wakes up on the same day every day. So, he, he went to bed the night of Groundhog's Day, and when he woke up, it was that same day. Same stuff happens. Repeat day. But until he, he starts. Remem- does he remember so, everything the previous does. day? Yeah, so then he starts getting to the point where he has to prove it to people that he's not going crazy, and he's like, I can prove it because I know this person's background, yada, yada, yada. Um, right. And then that person so says, well, like I've never that, met him. What's that other movie that we watched that was like that? Uh, oh, um, with Andy Samberg, Palm Springs? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like so, that. Yeah, just like that. Um, but Does my money run out, or is it like I have a million dollars You'd have a million dollars every day, basically. But then nah. you wake up and it'd be a million dollars again, but same day, same scenario. No. Nah. You wouldn't do it. No. I feel like you're limited in what you can enjoy. Like, if you gave me a million dollars now, I could be like, oh, I'm going to France. But you could you could do that in a day. Yeah, you'd have enough time to get to the airport and fly however many hours and then wait and get your luggage and get to the hotel and then wake up and do it all over again. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to so definitely not. say no. Okay. No. Nah. Um, so if I paid you a million dollars, which is a ton of money, seven figures, but you had to permanently live and work in Gary, Indiana, would you do it? Can you give me an hour to research Gary, Indiana? Um, you wouldn't need an hour. <laughs> I gotta live there forever. <laughs> yeah, permanently live and work there. You can't nah. leave. No, nope. not no. Okay, just just because. I know you just said because a million it's dollars the same is a spot. ton of money, but it's it's <laughs> really not that much money. So I'm not gonna go to some place that I don't know anything about that's called Gary, Indiana, with a million. Do- what happens in a week when I'm out a million bucks? You're stuck in the worst city in America. Gary, Indiana. Yeah. Well, then let's increase the stakes. Let's say, new question, new amount of money. Let's say $10 million, but you don't get Sundays. So, like, every Saturday night, you sleep for, like, 24 to 30 hours, and then it's Monday. Hard no. For 10 mil. What's the reasoning? You already know why. If it's football, just, if you're sleeping the whole day anyways, you can just TiVo and record everything. No, Watch it the next day. Check up on all your stats the next day. You don't have to miss anything. No. I'm going to watch it. I ain't going to do it. I mean, Are you implying you, you would? For 10 mil, go to bed on Saturday, wake up Monday. Just make it 30 and I'd do it. 30 mil. I don't think you would. Well, you might. Yeah, I would. So with 30 million, you could buy Ravens season tickets for the rest of your life. You're going to go to like six games. <laughs> yeah, the Monday, Thursday, and maybe a random Saturday game. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, mm, I'd do it for 30. I'd do that's, it for, I, that's like I our, think it'd be our worth our the sacrifice. Love, man. I don't, that's a lot to give up. I wouldn't be giving it up. Like I said, like I would, I would just, and not, I only, already, not only football, you work a, you work a nine to five, you get one fucking weekend day, the rest of your working career. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing I don't work a nine to five. Um, I'm going to go with no final answer. Okay. Well then the last one's going to be. Um, we're going to go back to the million dollar amount and say for a million dollars, but for one year, you have to get a new tattoo every single day. So you have to get 365 tattoos. No. Well, what if it was what? just like a dot? Yeah. Like on, I'd do it for a dot on the bottom of my foot or something. Yeah. Just your whole body yeah. of your foot has 365 dots on it. Yeah. Let's do it. There you go. Okay. I like that workaround. Yeah. Good copper. You wouldn't get like at least a couple that are like tattoos you wanted maybe but majority of them just be bottom of the foot yeah just little dots <laughs> be like okay. stepping on a lego every day yep yep definitely would stepping on a beehive i mean it's worth the pain because all it's going to be is like a little prick right that's yeah it's going to be literally tattoo. it's going to be a little pinch and then you're done yeah yeah okay so tattoos on the bottom of your foot taking the money what if you like what if i paid you a million dollars but like you had to be like a cop for for like I don't know three hours, but in like Los Santos GTA, like an online session, like a random online thing. Because I feel like you no. could just drive some middle of nowhere and just park yourself as a cop and just hide for three hours, and then you're good. Yeah, but if if the scenario is that, then I'm a NPC and I don't really have any say over what I do. 
Oh, that's true. He's got three so, stars. I'm coming after you. Yeah, I'm going to go with no. Yeah, <laughs> he'd probably die pretty quick. I thought you were going to say a cop for three hours, like, every day. Just, oh, uh, no. I was trying to think of something more. Uh, I was going to say that that I would do. I was a cop for four years for probably $24,000 a year, so. Yeah. No, I thought the GTA would throw a little bit of uh, spice into yeah, paying I mean, that if, much money. If, if I'm allowed to go elsewhere, then yeah, but if I'm obligated to go meet death willingly. Definitely then, not. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely no, not. Not going to do that. Yeah. That's a good answer. I'd, I'd probably do. Yeah. I wouldn't do it either, but it's a lot of money. It's it a lot like of 20 money. minutes. Could. The only time I ever play Grand Theft Auto is when I'm like, all right, I'm going to go fucking destroy shit. Well, and it's not like you're a cop on someone's personal game, like an online sessions. Right. There's so that's <laughs> multiply 30 to 60 by, players yeah. in there. No. Just going ham. Thousand percent. No. <laughs> all right. All right. That's yeah. fair. It's fine. God, that's so bad. No, there's no amount of money. Yeah, because you're not coming out of there. No. No, no chance. I think that's all I got for you for the million dollars, just while we were talking about the would you rathers and this scenario and that scenario. I thought that'd be a good opportunity to... Yeah. Well, I got one for you. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a few episodes now, but I haven't been able to think of anything. So I thought of some stuff. Okay. Which one of these are higher? I'm going to give you... A series of two things, and I want okay. you to tell me which one you think is higher. Okay. The first one is the number of stars in the Milky Way or the number of trees on Earth. Oh, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with the trees. I don't think that's You're the most popular answer, but. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It says there are about 100 billion to 400 billion stars in the Milky Way and approximately 3 trillion trees on Earth. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's not even close. No. The next one is the total length of all human blood vessels in one body or the circumference of the earth. Uh, we'll go with miles for each. I feel like that's a trick question. It's going to be the blood vessels because you wouldn't think that's the answer, but it is kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's <laughs> right. That's okay. about 60,000 miles and the earth's circumference is approximately 24,900 miles. That's crazy. I got a bunch of these. Kind of like my monitor right now. That's crazy. Is it? All right. The next one is the height of Mount Everest in feet or the depth of the Mariana Trench in feet. The trench is deeper, if I'm not mistaken. You're not mistaken. I kind of okay. want to know why you're not mistaken because I wouldn't I even think have known I've seen where to... a visual of like, here's how deep it is. And they had Everest like mm. upside down kind of thing. Right. Um, because it's like multiple miles deep, right? Uh, well, how many feet are in a mile? 20 something hundred. 20 something hundred? Mm hmm. So like 2,000 something? Mm hmm. Okay. Well, Mount Everest is about 29,000 feet, and the Mariana Trench is about 36,000 feet. Damn. So it's a good six, seven miles deeper than Everest is tall. Yeah. Wow. All right. The okay. next one is. The next one is the total number of episodes of The Simpsons. Oh, that's a lot. Or the total number of Pokemon. I know past the Pokemon that we watched and grew up on, there's like multiple generations now, and there's a lot of them, right? Right. But The Simpsons has also been on since, what, 89, 88, 87? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Something Christ. Like that. Um, I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to go with The Simpsons episodes. So there's... It says over 700 episodes of The Simpsons while there are 900, over 900 Pokemon species. Spe Poke yeah, whatever the fuck it is. I would have thought The Simpsons number was higher than 700. Yeah, I would have too. I don't huh. know. I don't know how many episodes are in a season. Yeah, I think they vary. I think. I don't know. Okay. The next one is the number of keys on a grand piano or the number of bones in the human body. Body is what, 256? Maybe. I'm going to go with the bones. Oh, wait, there's the little black minor major keys, whatever they're called. Mm. I'm still good with the bones. You're correct. It says a grand piano has 88 keys and the adult human body has 206 bones. That's close. We'll take it. All right, they're going to start getting a little more interesting. The next one is the annual global production of rice versus the annual global production of wheat. Damn, I'm going to go with rice. Asia's huge doing rice. The global production of rice is approximately 738 million tons. Wheat's going to be in like the billions, isn't it? No, it wheat is 
760.9 million tons. Oh. Whoa. Oh, mil- oh, shit. So, so I was only off by 30 million? Fit- oh, 30, only. 20 million-ish. Yeah. Damn. It's funny. I said in my head, I said, oh, Asia's huge. It's rice. And then I went, but then the rest of the world. Yeah, remember? Remember the rest? <laughs> the rest of the world doing all their wheat. Yeah. Okay. I like that right. one. The next one is the number of elements on the periodic table or the total number of countries that have been to space, including space activities, launching satellites, that kind of thing. Got to go at the periodic table. I feel like there isn't that many countries that have been to space. Go ahead. There is, but you're right. There's okay. 118 elements on the periodic table and about 72 countries have been involved 72? in space activities. I could probably name like 10, maybe. 72? That's what it says. Damn. The next one is the total number of muscles in the human body or the number of islands in Indonesia. Mm, it's a lot of both of them. I guess that's why it's a good question. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, I am going to say the islands. You're correct. Okay. The human body has around 650 muscles and Indonesia has over 17,000 islands. Holy crap. That one wasn't even close. Yeah, not at all. But it's still, it's good. It makes you think. You're like, mm, wait a minute. And all also, right. how, many, how many muscles did you say? 650. That's a lot where, of muscles. Where are they at? Man, God damn. they're not here. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Um, all right, this is one that I added. The next one is the number of words in the entire Harry Potter series combined, or the like each, average. Each different word counts as a word? Yeah. Just okay. in this, not like every book in existence, just in those the seven books. Yeah. Okay. Or the average amount of miles a human drives in their lifetime. I'm going with the words. You're correct. It is 1,084,170. And the average amount of miles driven is 810,000. Damn, there's some Hondas out there that got that on it. Okay. Ain't kidding. All right. The next one is. The total number of bones in a hammerhead shark's body or the total number of teeth an adult human can have? Can have. I'm going to go with the teeth. You're correct. My only thought process is that a hammerhead doesn't have that many bones. Just, that was so, my thought process. So the, the thing I read said sharks in general. I added hammerhead mostly to, cartilage, to throw right? a curveball. The sharks don't have any bones in their body. Doesn't no it? sharks do. Well, apparently. Teeth. They have teeth. Yeah, well, I guess we're going with it. Sharks being car- cartilaginous right, right, do right. not have bones in the traditional sense, while an adult human has up to 32 teeth. Although, would we count the teeth in a shark's mouth? Like, how many teeth does a hammer have? All right. That's a fair point. I'll like leave that one up for debate. The world yeah. may never know, right? <laughs> well, they probably know. We just got to Google it. Uh, all right, and the last one, the number of Olympic gold medals won by Michael Phelps or the number of Grand Slam singles won by Serena Williams? I knew the Michael one. I think it's 19, I think. Um, but I don't know enough about tennis or Serena. to. So I'm going to go with Michael. Okay, that was a trick question. They both have 23. 23, okay. Wow, good old Marilyn boy. Yeah, good for him and her. Yeah, so that question led me think of another question to ask, but I, okay. didn't, I didn't think that... It was even up for debate. I was thinking, who would you say is the best female athlete of all time? But mm. I don't. I don't think it's it's got to be her, right? Who, Serena? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know where else you'd even. I mean, you could go from each sport and try to compare it to her accolades, but, but accolades, I don't yeah, think anyone's wise. Yeah, done what she's done. Right. Okay. Then I'm. Happy to say Serena Williams. Yeah. 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 So that one was crossed off the list because I don't, I don't think it's a debate. Okay. Well, with, um, I was watching it today. It was like worst, worst, uh, referee blunders slash like sports calls, like in the history of sports. Um, it was a lot of like football, but then there was other stuff mixed in there. But what like comes to your mind is like maybe like a top, like the two or first, three. I decide from Des Bryant. Two or three. No, no, not that one. <laughs> The first, because that wasn't, that wasn't really a blunder. That was just a, a bad call. It was a bias. But yeah. the first thing that comes to mind is when the NFL had those replacement refs. And oh, I think it was like a, a Packers-Cardinals game or something like that. And like the receiver, 
I think the pass was intercepted and like the receiver caught the dude that caught the ball, the defender, and they they called it a touchdown. <laughs> Wait, he didn't have the ball in his hands? <laughs> no, the defender had it. Like the defender went up and grabbed it and like was coming down and the receiver went up and like put his hands around the hands Jesus. of the defender that already had it and he landed on him. Do you remember that Saints Rams game? Was it the NFC Championship? Or oh God, yeah, divisional that was, round. That, that pass interference call. One. Yeah, that was really bad. Which is um, why they started making it so you could review penalties, and then did it for like a year. And right, like, nah. Just so kidding. just because it doesn't live up to that, we're gonna just get rid of it in general. Right, like that's retarded. Well, the top uh, may not have been a top one, but it was close. Um, was what then introduced the tuck rule would have been the Brady snow game against Oakland. Well, that wasn't really a blunder, right? That was just the rule well, at the time. It was it was on the list of worst calls. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which mm, I wasn't a fan of that call, but you know, hey, it's Tom we, Brady. So I don't think anybody was a fan of that call. Fuck mm-hmm. Tom Brady. Okay. Was there any other not football in there? Um, there was a lot. I mean, there was baseball calls, hockey calls. Um. Cricket was on there. I was like, I don't know what this means, but they're doing it. I don't know what um, the refs doing cricket. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, there was a bowling on there at one point because like something about the dude's foot crossing the yeah, line. Yeah, they called a This and this and yeah. Why, there's machines that do that. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was. Is the machine went off, but he was like, my foot never crossed, and they showed the camera, and his foot never actually crossed. And but the thing that's called what, it, so so they had to call it. And that's wild that you have instant replay for bowling, like. Let's go to the tape. Send it up to New York. All right, let's get some VAR think, on on the spare there. Yeah. yeah. God, can you uh-huh. imagine? Can you imagine Tony Romo commentating a bowling match? I'd like to hear Joe Buck do it because he could at least make it entertaining. Yeah, he'd make it entertaining, but Romo would make it like a different kind of entertaining. He'd be like, Tony, his foot was over the. Uh, I think it just crossed, Jim. He'd be so far gone from drinking, anyways, that he well, would you just, have to be if you're watching fucking bowling. He'd be up. He'd just I'd be, be up at the fucking in the arcade eating pizza and drinking beer <laughs> oh yeah he got a strike he's good he's he's great um i saw a, a clip it wasn't having to do with that list but it was um i think it was like minor league baseball or like a men's league or something like the ref the pitcher throws the ball and the catcher catches it ref calls it a ball and then the catcher like taps his head and then the ump taps his head and turns behind him to look up at the booth where their replay booth is and within like six seconds he got the signal, and they was like, no, it's a strike. Like, they looked at the, um, the so pitch is that tracker. Like, I want to challenge it? Yeah, hey, I want to challenge that, that that was a strike. And he's like, okay, I know you want to challenge goes, it. And okay, taps him he back. looks, he comes around, and he goes, strike. And I was like, whoa, never never seen that before. And I don't know how I felt about it. Like, if it yeah, was Yeah, I wonder like, if that's one of those you get so many a game. Because if I was a catcher, every fucking ball that's called, I'm like, like. Yeah. Well, while you said that, I just watched Kansas City Royals hit a freaking home run. So that's cool. Come on, Dean. Get it together. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Who the fuck is Dean? It's our starting pitcher today. <laughs> Dean what? Uh, Kramer. That just sounds like someone we went to high school with. He's got a sweet man bun. I'll be honest. Uh, that's an oxymoron. Pretty jealous. <laughs> it's pretty of sweet. What? It's pretty sweet. Of he what? pulls his it vagina? off. He pulls it off well. <laughs> I will say. He needs he needs to pull it off his head well. Some, some people can pull it off and some can't. And I mean, he couldn't pull that pitch off, but he's at least he has the hair to back it up. You got hair to back up a pitch? Well, messing up. At least you go, ah, all right, at least he's looking good, looking bad. So would you call that a messy <laughs> bun? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I feel like you were kind of leading me there with that uh, fucking tuck rule call. Well, a little bit. I was trying to get a nice transition in there for you. A little bit of fuck Tom Brady action going. I like it. <laughs> Hell yeah. So we both have the same, uh, you know, people ask you, what's your, who's your, who's your greatest quarterback of all time? That common question in months football folk. And we both answer with the jersey you're now wearing, which is the late great Peyton Manning, right? That's right. That makes it sound like he's dead. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Uh yeah. the great Peyton Manning. There you go. <laughs> we'll call him Great and Manning. Great Manning. Um and I think the number two answer would be We could put Brady at two. I don't give a shit. He's just not the best. Uh I didn't phrase that correctly. Another answer people would say is Tom Brady. Oh, okay. As the greatest. I think more, probably more commonly, but I feel like so, those people are, are ignorant. David, please tell us why 
Peyton Manning's better than Tom Brady. Pull up a seat. I think the main argument that most people say, it's a good argument, but we're about to debunk all of it, is because uh, he has, what, six rings? He's got seven. Seven. Oh, Tampa. Yeah. But at the same time, who's the best basketball player ever? Um, yeah, Michael Jordan with, what, five? He's got six. They were both six. repeats, but didn't Bill Russell have like 11 or 13 championships Did he or really? something like that? Yeah. And he's never even put in the Not even in the conversation. Five, yeah. Yeah. Everyone else is going to say Kobe and then LeBron or. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was what I was going to ask you was why do people say that Tom Brady's the greatest? Because he's got. Because of that exact the reason. Super Bowls. Yeah. Yep. Well, Which, to I be fair, go you, ahead. Do need a, you do need a quarterback. Well, except for the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> and Dilfer was not, but you you typically need a competent quarterback and a defense. You you need a team around you, right? You need a team. You need your O line. You need guys behind you, guys out wide. You need everybody. And we've said um, it before. Tom Brady's a great quarterback. Yeah, not, not taking away I'm, the man's yeah. ability and I feel like his accolades. I mean, when he I, is phenomenal. Yeah, when I make the argument to people, it it seems like, and it's probably me because fuck Tom Brady, but I think they interpret it as if I'm saying Tom Brady sucks. Yeah, he's not good. Right. right. Which, obviously, I'm not. He's great. You know, you can't say a guy like Trent Dilfer. Like, oh, he's got a Super Bowl. Right. But if Trent Dilfer did it seven times, we'd be having a different conversation. But the thing with Tom Brady is, like you said, the team he has around him. And typically, I feel like when we're at the bar and we're we're having this drunk argument, I feel like that's always the last thing that comes up. But for once, we'll make that the first thing since that's going to be the first thing people bring up. Okay. Well, hit me with what you got. So, obviously, it's Tom Brady's defense that's carried him his his forever, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Tom Brady has had, on the teams that he's played for, nine top five defenses, 18 top 10 defenses, and he's been on teams outside the top 10 four seasons. The years that he went to the Super Bowl, his defenses were ranked 7, 5, 1, 8, 15, 4, 2, 1, 6, and 8. And what year was that 15? Was that Tampa? Uh, no, I think they had a, a good defense. No, you're Tampa. right. They did. Yeah. So nine top five defenses, 18 top 10 defenses. While Peyton, on the other hand, had four top five defenses and seven top 10 defenses and played on teams outside the top 10, 10 years. The years that Peyton went to the Super Bowl, his defenses were ranked 8, 23, 4, and 22. Yes. 23 and 22. Oof. Yeah. So Peyton had less top 10 defenses than Tom Brady had top five defenses. Yeah. So that's a good place to start. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll stick with we'll stick with the team the team thing as we move forward. So a lot of this is hard to put into perspective, I guess, because Brady played six more seasons. But with that in mind, Tom Brady's offense was top five in points thirteen times and top five in yards nine times. Well, you could argue he's a big reason for that, right? He is a big reason for that. But that's so that's thirteen thirteen times top five and 23 years, and so 13 times out of 23 seasons, top five in points. Nine times out of 23 seasons, top five in yards. Where Peyton was 12 times in 17 seasons, top five in points, and 12 times in 17 seasons, top five in yards. So that's, you know, calculate the percentage you want there. That's obviously more times and less seasons. You get what I'm trying to say. I got it. Yeah, yeah. So for the the individual stats, I broke I broke everything down by game because, like we said, he played a lot longer. And then I have a few season stats. So all right, so minus the record because obviously you can't have a record per game. So everybody praises Brady for his record, which is phenomenal. He was two fifty one and eighty two, which is a seventy five percent winning percentage, which is great. Peyton was one eighty six and seventy nine for a 70% winning percentage, which is still phenomenal. And then from there, I get down to the per-game stats. Um, I mean, I guess this isn't too indicative because it just goes back to the last one, but per-game, Tom Brady averaged 
being 23.1 of 36 attempts, whereas Peyton averaged 23 out of 35. So they're pretty close there. Uh, Passing yards per game, Peyton had 270 compared to Brady's 266. Uh, Touchdowns per game, Peyton had 2.03 compared to Brady's 1.94. Peyton had more interceptions per game. He had 0.94 to Brady's 0.63. Now, is this counting Brady's extra seasons that he played compared to Peyton? That's yeah, so that's skew that's the why, numbers. Well, that's why I broke it down to per game. Yeah, but Brady played more games, so his numbers are going to be lower. No, because he not. had more. No, because he's going to have more total stats, but it's going to be divided by more games because he played more games. Does but I'm saying the more that you play, the lower that average per game is going to go down for touchdowns and yards. Why? Well, you have more opportunities to not do as well compared to somebody who stopped seven seasons before. But you also have more opportunities to do better. Yeah, true. But typically someone who played longer stats are not going to be as high as somebody who played a shorter time. And I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Yeah, I think I think that's a reach. I get it, but No, it's not a reach. It's like just the dude the dude mass. won a Super Bowl the year before he retired. So he was still playing at a high level. Yeah, no, I'm not saying he wasn't. I'm saying that the he's the longevity is going to lower averages the longevity could lower averages but you're getting older like, so it's it's going so say if brady stopped like what if you did these stats for the year that Peyton retired up until then or at least the same length like take 18 years their first 18 years and just stop don't give brady his extra three four five what are those averages like i feel like that would that would skew it it would more in peyton's favor because brady did so well so late into his career so I feel like this, well, we might if anything, is given, is given Brady more of an advantage. I'll have to do some more digging just to, just to, just to look, just to put my yeah. mind at ease. But could you do that? Go ahead. So then for those three stats, the passing yards, touchdowns, and interceptions, for those three, I pulled a season as well. So Brady averaged 38, 78 yards a season, 28.2 touchdowns a season, and nine interceptions a season, 9.2. Peyton averaged 42-32 yards a season, 31.7 touchdowns a season, and 14 interceptions a season. Uh, Then we get down to QBR, which has only been calculated since 2006. Uh, Brady's career QBR is 70.4. Peyton's is 82.9. Passer rating, Peyton is 96.5. Brady's 97.2. Now, I don't know. I don't remember what all goes into calculating the rating. I know people said it wasn't very reliable, and that's why they came out with the QBR. Mm, okay. But even still, they're 0.7 apart. Uh, yards per completion, Brady is 11.5 to Peyton's 11.7. Yards per attempt, Brady 7.4 to Peyton's 7.7. Uh so sacks is another one. Obviously, the longer you play, the more you're going to get sacks. So I broke those down per game. Peyton was sacked only 1.14 times per game. Brady was sacked 1.69 times per game. Which is surprising because I figured when I think of Brady in his heyday, it's just the big grizzly white dudes with their beards not letting him get touched. Yeah. And then for sack yards, Brady was sacked for 10.8 seven yards per game. Peyton was sacked for only 7.3 yards per game. Yeah, no one cares about that stat. Uh, Yeah, well, this one's a little better. So this is the sack percentage, which means per every, I think it's per every 100 dropbacks, they were sacked this number of times. So per every 100 dropbacks, Brady was sacked four and a half times, Peyton only 3.1 times. Okay. It's also a little bit on the O-line too, right? It is, but, you know, you could also get or rid of the Or the defenses and, you're playing. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes it's better to take a sack. And we're just We're true. just throwing all the numbers out here. This is another one that uh, you can tell by the totals. The totals are close enough that the extra six years Brady played, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. But it's easy to see, but I still broke them down in averages. So fourth quarter comebacks, Brady had 46, Peyton had 43. However you break down that percentage, I guess that's, oh, I did per game. I guess I should have done per season. Regardless, Brady's percentage is 
0.14, Peyton's is 0.16. So basically, in six more years, Brady only had three more fourth quarter comebacks. In six more years, he only had four more game-winning drives. He had 58, Peyton had 54. Uh, he had 134 fumbles. Peyton only had 75. So he Brady fumbled 0.4 times per game. Peyton only 0.28 times per game. I think that's about it in terms of stats. And then we get down to the accolades. So Brady had three MVPs. Peyton had five. They both had two Offensive Player of the Year. They both had one Comeback Player of the Year. Brady was a 15-time Pro Bowler. Peyton was 14, so one less in six less years. Brady was a three-time first-team All-Pro. Peyton was a seven-time first-team All-Pro. Brady was a three-time second-team All-Pro. Peyton was a three-time second-team All-Pro. Uh, Brady was Player of the Week 40 times. Peyton 37 times, so three less times in six less years. Mm -hmm. uh, 96 Brady, less games, yep. Yeah. Brady was Player of the Month 11 times, Peyton 8 times, so again, 3 less in 6 less seasons. Uh, I think that's all I got. That's all I was able to get to. Okay. I was trying to get into, like, their other... So the one that I was telling you earlier when I realized that Stat Muse was shit in the bed was... Yeah. I saw some stat about uh, time of possession. So the when one of the years that Peyton was on the Colts, they had the ball for, like, 13 minutes and mm -hmm. won like 27 to 6 and it was like the lowest time of possession that a team had to win since like 1976 when they started keeping the stat so I was trying to find like Peyton's average time of possession and Brady's average time of possession but I couldn't so well, I think the other thing for me is if like when you throw out those scenarios of like who's the greatest of all time or like I think it's also for me like who would I want as a quarterback and I think if Peyton is like, a, like he's like the commander. He's the general on the field, right? Yeah. And and Tom, I think of he's like he's like the captain. Like you know, he'll get the job done. He'll give you a get at him, boys. But right. Peyton right. just was on another as far as football, like mentally. Yeah. He's like the the Kobe of football. Just knew exactly what the heck was going on every play. Who's coming yeah. where? Who's going? Doing what? Not and to say I Tom couldn't have... read defense as an audible, but Peyton no, he could. Was... And that's I'm trying to. I thought I had more, I know I had more typed out. I don't know where I put it. But, like, another thing that I I think is common knowledge, but it might not be to people that ride Brady's dick, is that Peyton used to go to the huddle with three plays. He'd go with two passing plays and a running play. And then he'd go to the line, he would read the defense, and he would audible into whichever play he thought would be most effective. So he was essentially the coach slash offensive coordinator along mm -hmm. with the quarterback. Because, you know, that's what everybody knows him for is going up and calling his audibles and his hot Oh, routes one of the and, most vocal quarterbacks you'll yeah. ever hear. Absolutely. And then that was one of the other things that I saw was he was the most comfortable running plays that he had never even practiced. Because even when they'd call an audible, he would hot route so much that he'd have, you know, four guys wide running routes that they never even practiced. Yep. Yep. So. But he'd make it work. Right. And, you know, people always give the, the Marvin Harrison debate to like like Brady didn't have arguably the best tight end of all time I don't know why but that reminded me of another thing is uh I really wish I knew where all the fucking shit that I had written down was but yeah was, I don't know where all my shit went but one of the other things was like head to head I think Peyton's like six and 11 against Brady or something like that uh in the regular Pretty season eh, it's Brady's won twice as much but in the playoffs <laughs> Peyton's three and two and in the AFC Championship against Brady, he's three and one. So that's heck yeah, yeah. We're also, open to uh, go ahead. Just I I get it with the the Super Bowls and all that shit, but this dude lost three Super Bowls, two to Eli Manning and one to Nick Foles. What? Yeah. And one of them was could have been a perfect season. I can't believe they blew that deal. Dude got Randy Moss. Can you imagine if you gave Peyton Randy Moss? Yeah. Dude had Randy Moss. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Just throw it up. He's got it. The the NFC East has been Brady's kryptonite as far as defining his career because he lost to Eli twice in Super Bowls. One was a spoiled season. He lost one to Nick Foles, who A, is a backup, and B, gave the Eagles their first Super Bowl win ever. And 
Brady's last game of his career, he lost to the Cowboys. That's right. Yeah. That's I mean, good. the Redskins are, you know, they're not even sure why they're in the NFL, let alone the division. Yeah, but yeah go back are... to, we were saying, we, we welcome all oh, yeah. the and, Dick and Riders. Not, yeah, and it's not to be like, you're wrong, but you are. <laughs> Tom Brady's not I would enjoy being told time. why I'm wrong. Because I, I mean, I can, I'll post this, a screenshot of this fucking spreadsheet I got up here. And opposite, yeah. and, opposite and, interceptions. Uh, and like you said, we're not uh, here to say that the man's bad at football and take away all his accomplishments because yeah. he is one no, of the best to ever do it. But he ain't the greatest. He ain't the and greatest. I, and I respect Tom Brady a lot more than I do LeBron James. It. I like LeBron. LeBron. I mean, fuck Brady, but Brady at least was willing to take a pay cut to make his roster better, which respect, but also that I feel like goes to our point. Like yeah. you're making your roster better. But also Brady's humble uh, in a sense. I mean, in a sense. we've talked before about how LeBron's the self-proclaimed king. Like, this is true. For you? The cho- we got Anakin Skywalker and Harry Potter. They didn't self-proclaim being the chosen one, but LeBron did. That's right. Listen, like, you got to do what you, you? got to do. You're from Ohio, motherfucker. Get out of here. <laughs> Good old Akron boy. But, um, I mean, Tom Brady's even said himself that he's a system quarterback. He said put Aaron Rodgers on the team and they'd have 10 Super Bowls. And like I said, exactly. He's a he's a good captain of the team, but right. Peyton is the freaking general of the field. He, he really is. Can you imagine? So another one of my arguments is that year that Brady was hurt when uh fuck came in. Matt Castle came in and went like ten and six or eleven and five yeah. and made the playoffs. He didn't have to do much. No, complete. And then complete everyone some, was like some oh, in routes. And... He's just a good quarterback. And then he went to Dallas and. Suck dick. He went to Kansas City and sucked an equal amount of dick. Because he didn't have a top 10 defense. He didn't have receivers. He didn't have a running back. He didn't have an O-line. Right. Absolute. Thousand percent. It, yeah. it is definitely all system. And that's kind of uh, where most of these guys' success stems from, um, even Which, now in football. Yeah, and that's, that's also why it is. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, I think, went 5-0 and as a starter He's garbage, man. He's doo-doo. But he was 5-0 and not... in New England. Nah. Uh, I think Jacoby Brissett went 4-0 and in New England. Um, Jacoby has done decent on all the teams he's played on, though. Decent, not 4-0 and and probably whatever stats right. he had in New England. Right, right, right. But he's, he's been one of those more clutch uh, backup, our main guys hurt kind of guys for the past few years here. Yeah. But, I mean, there's, there's a lot more. Uh, we're recording a little earlier than we normally do, so there's a, a limited amount of prep time, but... That's kind of good because it could be reserved if anybody wants to try yeah, to argue. Yeah, we're ready for it. Well, I'm going to give you some stuff. You ready to play? I'm going to do my little saw thing. I'm going to play a game. We'll play a game. So you, you've been pretty good at these um, since we've been recording and in the past, just these these fast money family feud things. My favorite. You, you're familiar with these, yeah? I'm familiar. I used to watch the show these? every night. Which one, the Steve Harvey or um, going back to Louis Anderson or... Uh, um. I guess both, because I was talking about Steve Harvey, but I know when I was and then younger. The other guy from um Home Improvement. Yeah, Al. Something? Al. God, I can't Al. remember his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Al. Mm-hmm. Al Bundy. Well, regardless, we'll just Bundy. think of me as all those people combined. That's a that's a <laughs> the big dude. <laughs> that's a poor that's a poor thought. That's a poor choice. Um Oh man. Cause then who was that other Louis Anderson? Mm-hmm. Al, Steve, and then Richard. Yeah, I feel like there's somebody in between there, though. Yeah. It not. We might as well keep going because it's not going to make that combination look any better. All right, David, you ready to play Fast Money? Let's do it. All right, I got five questions for you. 60 seconds to answer each question. Are you ready? Ready. All right. Starting the time now. Tell me something many people do just once a week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Exercise. Name a reason a person might wake up at 2 in the morning. Got to pee. Name something you might eat with a hamburger. French fries. Name something you haven't done since high school gym class. Exercise. Uh, and then we asked 100 Americans, how much do you tip for good service? 20%. Is that what they're looking for? Percentage? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very nice. I wish I would have thought more about the gym class. I just, I said exercise because I had already <laughs> said it and it sounded like it would make good content. Well, let's start with, um, tell me something many people do just once a week. And you said exercise, which is... Not on our list, unfortunately. Um, we had church as your number one answer. 
Um, groceries slash shopping, laundry, cleaning the house, sleeping in, and eating out are our top six answers there. Um, name well, a reason right. a person might wake up at two in the morning. Have to use the bathroom. It's our number one answer, 24 points. Good job. 24. 24. What else out is on there? Yeah, uh, because of the baby or child, they had a bad dream. They heard a noise. Um, they're too hot or too cold. They're too hungry or thirsty. Um, because of work, because they're itchy, and because they're in the mood. I I really hate waking up when I'm itchy. It's the worst. You you could wake up and be <laughs> in the mood, but I don't think you could wake up because you're in the mood. Like I didn't make the rules. I'm just the okay. host. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Name something you might eat with a hamburger. You said French fries. Just to make up for it. You got sixty points on that, my friend. Okay. Uh, we said name something you haven't done since high school gym class. You said exercise, um, which a lot of these answers are exercising. Should I be more specific? Can you be more mm, specific? Lift weights. All right. Lift weights is our fifth answer at eight points. What the fuck? Um, number one is run the mile or run a mile. Um, that, oh, that was gym class, wasn't it? Number okay. two is dodgeball. Number three that was, was push-ups. That. Oh, fuck. So you know what? You said gym class. Uh-huh. And I thought weight training with Mr. Dunn. <laughs> Don't say it can't be done. It can be done. Say it can be done and eat some peanut butter while you do it. Yeah. And um, we asked 100 Americans, how much do you tip for good service? You got our number one answer, 20%, 39 points. So let's so calculate for you here. You got 39 plus. You got 99 on two. So my 24 plus on your the other eight, one. You're at 47. You're at 107. And then you're, no, you didn't get any of that. Sounds like 132. What'd you say for the sleeping, waking up at 2 a.m.? Got to pee. Yeah, 107. So you got 131. Ah, oh, I was one off. 131. Those French fries came in clutch with 60. We bad, yeah, hell yeah, they did. And you know what's Ooh. funny is I almost said hot dog because my fat ass will eat both at the same time. <laughs> well, when you go four for five and you still get 131, your family's clapping real hard. Yeah, they Steve, come. Steve's hitting you clapping. on the shoulder with his cards going, ooh, ooh. Man, I love watching them reels. It's like the the dumbest shit people say in Family Feud. Oh, yeah. And, and we've all seen them a million times, but it never gets old. Yeah. Like, they're always freaking hilarious. Fucking great. I know your... Is it your favorite? My favorite's the... the name coupon? something. Yeah. yeah. Something that... Name a word that comes after the word pork. Yeah. Yeah. Coupon, coupon Steve. He, and Steve coupon. says... Steve says, huh? <laughs> I like the ones where, like... He'll ask them, and they'll say something, and he'll be like, you think that's a good answer? And they're like, yeah, that's great. The whole family's clapping like, yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you really? stupid mother. He no, like, he not goes that. Like, he's like, oh, okay. It's, it's so good, and then he'll point, and it's like already up there, like uh, after talking uh-huh. to him for like three minutes. He's like, it's so good, somebody already said it. Yeah. Well, and then the pork one had another funny one where she says, she says loin, like pork loin, but she, she screams, and she says, lawn. And Steve goes, Lon, Steve, Lon. And he looks at the family like, what is she saying? And they're going, loin, loin. And he goes, oh. And then he does that thing where he like, oh, 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 loin. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, pork lawn. Man, Too the, one I, the one I saw the other day was like, uh, it was like name something like not unfortunate that would happen at a wedding. And the guy was like, there's no pasta. And Steve yeah, was I've like, seen that. You saw it was that? a pastor. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just the Zach said. I was like, and Steve's like, all right, uh, no pasta. <laughs> like, no the pastor, priest, Steve. no priest. He's like, oh, pastor. Dude, that should have me rolling. <laughs> oh, that was so great. Well, I want to keep your mind going. Okay, good, because uh, get, not, it, get it and, while it's hot. Um, get it while it's hot. Um, what would you say your favorite show of all time is? Breaking Bad. And how many times have you seen Breaking Bad? Probably watched From it start, through. start to finish. Probably watched it through like eight times. Eight times. So then this shouldn't be too bad. I got some Breaking Bad general trivia that I want you to answer. Well, okay. So when I say eight times, it was. Well, you were doing schoolwork and, yeah. you know, so you weren't 100% paying attention, but you've seen it enough times that. Yeah. Well, okay. You could, I think you could do what we okay. got. Um, so it's just general, general trivia from different seasons. It's um, also some of that. Been a while. A long time. Well, some of them specify the season. If you want me to include that, I can. Nah, it's all the same to me. All right. Uh, I'm going to start off with the first one. Um, what country is Gustavo Fring from? El Salvador. He's from Chile. Um, what causes Walt to shut down meth production to prevent contamination? A fly. A fly is correct. So let's stop there. Okay. 
by far the worst episode of the entire series. <laughs> Every series has it, though. Every when series has that one that does. you just go, why? Yeah, why did but you it, even it's usually think like, I feel like that's half usually of the episode? like a background or like uh, some sort of like prequel or like, You're right, you, right, not right, right. to like literally the entire fucking time. He, and I and I get it. I get what they're going for. But but it was as 45 viewer, minutes of bullshit of yeah. him going around trying to catch his fucking fly. All right. Next question. <laughs> um, what trinket of Tuco's does Hank get made as a paperweight? Which one's Tuco? I actually knew this one. I was happy about that. Tuco's the one in the very beginning, right? No. Uh, I'm asking wait. you the questions here. Well, you said you'd give me C's and if I asked. Fuck, I can see it sitting on his desk. Mm -hmm. It's in like an epoxy-like yeah. cube. Uh-huh. It's not a... You know, you said trinket. Give me a clue. Lead me there. I'm like uh, right there. He, he wears it. Something he would wear. Earring? Close. You're close. Something more gangster? A grill. A grill. Nice. That's right. Um, here's a little more difficult one. What message does the cartel leave on a hijacked Los Polos truck in season four? <laughs> I think that's when the twins show up. Is it the same thing they leave on the sidewalk in front of Walt's house? Mm, I don't think so. It's three it. words with a question mark. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The ready to talk question mark? On the truck? <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, how do Jesse and Walt determine who will dissolve Emilio's body? By far one of the best episodes, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good one. Aside from magnets, bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that episode. <laughs> I want to say flip a coin, but I don't think that's it. That's it. Is that it? is it. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember Good because job. they're they're sitting at Jesse's kitchen table, and Walt goes best two out of three. <laughs> uh, what nickname does Walter White Jr. prefer to be called? Flynn. Flynn. Nice job. Um, where does Jesse hide the poison vial in that Walter gives him and loses in season five? Say that again. Where does Jesse hide the poison vial in? It's not worded that well. Um, it should be, what does Jesse hide the poison vial in that Walter gives him and loses in season five? That Walter gives him and loses. So it's not when they give it to Tuco because that's before season five. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the ricin? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. No. The ricin's Tuco. I think the ricin is this too. It's in uh Oh, okay. Wait, loses it? What it says? I don't remember this. So I know at one point... They think that Jesse's girlfriend's son ingests it. Okay. I don't know where he loses it, though. That's probably about... Or no, it's asking, what did he hide it in? But lost it? Mm-hmm. But the question is, what was it hidden in? An outlet. It was a cigarette. Oh, that's right. All right, I got one more. Um, what does Saul insist Walt put his money in before Skyler convinces him to buy the car wash? These are good questions. I only knew, like, two of them. I know. I had a... What a... Like, something you would do as a kid. Like, physically, where does he put it? No, like, what did he want him to invest in? Uh, the laser tag place. Laser tag, yeah, there you go. That's that all I got. Physically, he put it behind that AC vent. Yeah, in the baby's room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good yeah, job. I wish you had I more think you did well. Yeah. Well, there's a lot on here, I mean, if you want more. Yeah, give me a couple more. All right. Um, Who replaced Jesse yeah. in Gus's lab in season three? Uh... I can picture him, Daniel but I wouldn't Hardman. have known his. I wouldn't exactly. I wouldn't have known his name. <laughs> um, I know it. Hold on. Could also be a female's name. Give me the first letter. A G of the first name. G. Ah, oh, it's really windy out here. Hold on. Hold on. It's blowing a blank force winds. It's really windy. Blank you said a, a G force winds. We've got blank force winds out here. Hurricane. No, that doesn't begin with a G. We. It was funny because <laughs> when you when you first said. <laughs> G and then wins, I thought, a gust. But that would be Gustavo. We got blank force wins. Give me the next letter. An A. Gail Bedecker. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not it. His name's Gail. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. What is Agent... S his name's Gail. What is Agent What's Steve last, Gomez... Does it have his last name? No. Okay, what is Agent... Ben Bedecker is the... That's the dude Skyler was fucking. I don't know. I got nothing. What is Agent Steve Gomez's nickname? <laughs> Damn it. You can hear Hank say it, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. What's the letter? A G for Gomez. Gomi? <laughs> Gomi. Uh-huh. Who kills Tuco? Which one's Tuco? Hank does. Mm-hmm. What comedian played Saul's henchman, Patrick Kuby? 
Cubby. I don't know his name. I can see him, but I don't know his name. Oh, you know his name. You definitely know this guy. Stand-up comedian? Is that you Bill? You definitely know this guy. Yeah, Bill Burr, yeah. That is, he's got hair. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, eh, it's too easy. No, it's too easy. All right, one more. Um, oh, that's a good one. What kind of gun does Walter rig up to kill Jack's gang at the end of season five? What Big are you looking for bitch. here? It's a, the, the name of the gun. It's a light machine gun. Yeah, I don't remember. It's a M. Mm-hmm. It's my go-to back in the SOCOM days. 50. 60. That's a good guess. Hey. That's all I got for you. A little Breaking right. Bad triv. Right. I have some thought-provoking questions. I'm going to get rid of this one. This one's stupid. What was your GPA in high school-ish? Like, I don't need an exact. Uh, probably three and a half, maybe just below it. Three and four-ish. So you got a lot of A's? Yeah. Did you get A's in English? Um, yeah, honestly, the only class I would never get an A in is any science class. This okay. wasn't my wasn't my forte. All right, well, uh, I'm going to give you a spelling bee, and we'll see mm. whether that was deserved. I met Mr. Young. He didn't care. All right, go ahead. I miss you only had English Yar- once? And that was senior year. Uh, Yar- Yarbrough? No, that was social studies. Um, Crankfield. Oof. All right, well, let's see if she taught you how to spell any of these words. Mm, not a big fan of this. <laughs> First one's going to be accommodate. Uh, A-C-C-O-M-A-D-A-T-E. Incorrect. It's A-C-C-O-M-M-O-D-A-T-E. Oh, accommodate. Oh, for one. Your next one's going to be conscience. See, it'd be a lot easier if I could just, like, write it. You can get some, a pen and paper if you need to. C O N C I O U S. No, conscience. Oh, not conscious. Like, yeah, it's like what you have in you, <laughs> not what you are. No, I think you said conscious. Well, I'm telling you now, conscience. Conscience. C O N C I E N C E. You're close. It's C O N S C I E N C E. So it's uh, con science, and you just said that you weren't good at science, so that makes sense. That's fair. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Your next one's going to be harass. H A R R A S S. H A R A S S. One R. R S. Your next Look, one. Look, Apple that, came out with autocorrect for a reason. They did. That's. I'm, <laughs> I'm not taking that away from you. Your, your next one's going to be necessary. Yeah, I hate this so much. N E. So which one's the double? Just one C. N E C E. Double S A R Y. You did it. Good job. Mm. Okay. All right. And your last one's going to be bureaucracy. Absolutely not. <laughs> B-E-U-R-O-C-R-A-C-Y. I-, I want to tell you you're close, but you're not. It's B- oh, did I forget the B-E-U-R? You said B-E-U-R, but it's just oh, B-U-R. It- and then you oh, added an O, it. and there's no O in there. It's B-U-R-E-A-U-C-R-A-C-Y. I need to write a letter to Webster. That's not right. You, I don't know if you want to do that. You, <laughs> you might spell it wrong. Wait, uh, just give me one more. Okay. Well, one more thing, but uh, like what is an everyday thing that you do that you feel guilty about doing? Guilty? Yeah. I'm I feel not bad that I did that? Yeah. Just like a, like a daily thing. I, guess. I don't know. Maybe starting my car at 4 a.m. There you go. See, that's <laughs> perfect. Which for anyone listening, it's not quiet when it starts. It's not. Not even <laughs> remotely close. What's a common habit you have that you wish you could stop? I'd I say. Do you have one? Common habit? Probably drinking so much. Like, so that, <laughs> does that make sense? Let, it does, but let that be your answer to this one. Okay. In what daily activity do you find yourself indulging more than you feel you should? Yeah. <laughs> I would say drinking... Um, and if you asked me this a year ago, I would have said eating bad food and shit food, but I've since cut that out. Wedding now, prep. Yeah. 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 Wedding prep. And then it just got me used to not eating, not that eating that way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. If you could have one question answered about your future, what would it be? But then if you knew the answer, you could alter it, right? Or change it or try to. Yeah. We'll go with that. The path you're Time? on now, what would you want to know? That would be so significant. I would say, w- at what age will I be retired? Like, when will that be? Because if the answer is like 
you won't or like 72 and go, oh, I want to retire way earlier than that. What can I do now to fix that? You know what I mean? Okay. I feel like you could be aware enough financially to make an impact as you approach. So, for example, you could yeah. instead say, like, when will I die? And if it's like 38, then you could maybe live a little more conservatively. Yeah, you'd want to live the opposite of a conservative. If you only have a few years to live, you want to. No, because maybe you like get fucking hammered and do something stupid on your 38th birthday and that's how you die. Oh, but if it says you're going to die when you're 38, I mean, there's nothing. Right, but we just established that you could do something to change it. That was your prerequisite for the question. Or maybe when I go to play Mega Millions, what are the numbers that I should play? I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think that's... Mm-hmm. It's... I think mm-hmm. you're misunderstanding the question. But so if you could have one question... It also answers, answers about it. your future. Okay. Yeah, I get it. You're, you're loopholing. You're right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, if I wanted to be a billionaire, what numbers would I play? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm going to play the lotto in my future, so what numbers should I play? Right. Okay. If you could have one fictional lawyer represent you, who would it be? Oh, that's really good. Um, I think I'm between three or, ooh, ooh, three or four. I'm going to go with Vinny from My Cousin Vinny. Okay, why? Oh, that'd just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> not that great. You're not going to get away but, with whatever or well, when he got whatever, them, but, he got them out of a double murder, and he wasn't that good of a lawyer. Hi everyone, I just wanted to take a second to ask that you all hit those like and subscribe buttons, or if you're an audio listener, go ahead and give the guys five stars. Thanks for listening. Now back to the poor choices show. Or I just, I mean, seeing like, oh, that person has their four year old out with them. The four year old's just on their their iPad, yeah, and just like. Now they're doing games and learning stuff, but I'm just like so setting them up for go failure. Throw, go throw, throw them in the ocean. Yeah, have them learn how to swim. A That's how I learned. Zip I got line in the pool. It was right, hey, go figure it out. Fight or flight. Yeah, yeah. Not fucking play on the playground. Yeah, not the one. I got, <laughs> I got thrown in a pool when I was in probably kindergarten. Swim. Yeah, that's how I learned. It was. <laughs> I mean, obviously swim. they weren't gonna let me die, but it was. And I went straight. Natural instinct. Dude, I was doggy paddle for probably two years. I was straight they like... Le- they left this. you in there for two years? <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting for two years. They dropped like fish food pellets in there and I had to, you know, <laughs> go in there. Going Swim in. down to the bottom and grab them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, oh, man. I despised little... it. I despised swimming. I had to go take swimming lessons at the YMCA and they'd take my floaties off. It was... I still remember being petrified. But once I learned how to actually tread water and swim, you're good. By the time I was in first, second grade, I was like, put me in the deep end. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same. I never did swim lessons, though. Like, we had to do, oh, I hated like, it. drown proofing in, like, elementary school or something. And all I remember about that is we were at the Riva pool, and we had to, like, huddle up and, like, fucking blow bubbles in our shirts and, like, make it so we could were float. You training for Navy SEALs? You had to go down? No, it was just, like, your if hands you're, tied if you're, like, and stranded your goggles that long, because <laughs> your shirt's so wet, you can, like blow into your collar and it like bubbles up so if you like pass out for a second the air in your shirt like keeps you afloat yeah they didn't teach us that in farmville maryland (laughs) probably didn't have a whole lot of water (laughs) this is the water here's for the crops kids well look the ymca was the only pool in town that's all i'll say the only ymca i know is the one we did at the wedding oh you never went to ymca as a kid so i would do kindergarten kindergarten was only a half day and then i'd spend yeah so it was only oh no no no. you're right a.m p.m yeah, yeah. So I would do AM. So because mom and dad work, so they dropped me off. And then the PM part I spent at the YMCA, which was also basically school. There's a room and all these kids, and you'd have your recess and your yada yada and your exercise. Um, and then they, I was always the last one to get five thirty, so six o'clock. Sun's coming down. I was what's always the, point? the last. What is one. the what? Like, what do you do there that you don't Just babysitting do us? There's babysitting us. So yeah. it was like, let's pay a babysitter, but. Also get him an education. Yeah. Well, YMCA is like a, I want to say it's a Christian run program. I think the C stands for Christian. Pretty sure. <laughs> so. Let me look that up. <laughs> I don't want to sound like an idiot. Nah, I do anyway. So it was like, instead, instead, of, me smelling. instead of going to kindergarten and then going home for like nap time, it was get education and then go get more education. Yeah, it was. So we even had nap time during our AM. Okay. So, but then you'd probably still get to the YMCA. I'd probably get to the YMCA by like 12 or 1 o'clock. And then okay. from there, yeah, it was kind of just like a professional babysitter, basically. 
but you got education? Um, yeah, they would like read to us. And I mean, it wasn't like sit down, learn, but it wasn't just, all right, the kids are here go let them have a free for all for three or four hours. I mean, they'd still do activities with you. So you at least like got a summer a camp little kind bit of thing. More of education than all the other kids. Yeah, sort of in a way. I mean, I was always placed in, you know, for summers, I was at camps every year. Like, again, they worked and then I had more babysitters than I could count on probably both hands growing up. I mean, whether it was after school or during summer or both. Um, and then elementary school eventually had a after school program called the ABC program. And that was just like extra gym slash recess time. It was like, all right, school's out, but your parents aren't here yet. So just go play. All of this just leads me to think that you should know how to spell accommodate. I know how to spell conscious. Do you know how to spell so, grateful? <laughs> the YMCA is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put Christian principles into practice through programs that build healthy spirit, mind, and body. Why do they call what doctors do for a living practice? Well, a lawyer practices law. Um, well, the, I, I guess my answer would be the origin of the word practice simply means to do, and multiple uses of the word arise, including to do with the intent of learning, rehearse, and to engage in a legal practice or medical practice is derived from the later usage. That's probably what I would say. You can't even spell half those words. Yeah, uh, from, F-R-O-M, <laughs> to, T-O. I thought that was Pop Terrell already. <laughs> That's all I got. Cool. Well, here's to Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. I've got two of them for you right here. Two more. But Bill went to Annapolis, so kind of less fuck him. No, they were one of our rivals. Fuck him. That's true. <laughs> and, and, Tom, and Tom went to Michigan, and I get enough of that at home. Fuck the esports, kids. That's it. Episode 9 out. Have a good day, guys. Mwah. Peace.